All right, what's going on, guys? Try back again here to bring you another video. This one's going to be doing another Walking Dead video for today, leading up to the tenth episode for the Walking Dead season nine. In this one, we're going to go over first ten things you may have missed from the mid-season premiere. All right, man, so I'll put the link in the description so you guys can go ahead and check this one out from thisisinsider.com. And uh, this is pretty cool, man. You know, 10 things that you may not have noticed when you watch the midseason uh, premiere and some that I omitted to mention in my review, even though I meant to. Uh, but because this one was on premiere, I had watched it earlier. And then when I did the review, I came back again and kind of went through it. But there's a few parts that I kind of uh, omitted to mention or forgot to mention. And the first one being that the spot that Negan goes back through near where he pukes near the water there is uh, is the same spot where both Glenn and Abraham were killed. So it's sort of the season seven premiere spot uh, around where he gets uh, he gets sick from the uh, the water and everything. So um, that's pretty cool, man. That's a pretty nice little touch that uh, that Negan has to go back through uh, some of the things that he did, you know, back when he was the leader of the Saviors and uh, in what was probably the biggest episode The Walking Dead will ever have, the season seven premiere. Uh, in this episode, the mid season premiere for season nine, he actually kind of goes back through that same location. Uh, on his way back to the uh, back to the sanctuary, um, maybe it's just on his path. Maybe it's just in the way, but uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, kind of a nice little sort of uh, throwback to season seven or season six finale. Of course, that was uh, that was when The Walking Dead was at its peak, man. That was the most popular The Walking Dead has ever been, and for him as a character, for Negan, I mean, that was when he was at his most, uh, maybe his most savage, and uh, you know, literally, you know, bashing people's brains in. <laughs> with a baseball bat wrapped in barbed wire. Absolutely brutal, right? So uh, to kind of bring him back to that spot um, and sort of make him think maybe again about some of the things that he uh, he had done, the things he did. Um, then we have this one, which is pretty cool because I didn't really notice this uh, as Negan is uh, escaping Alexandria or leaving. He uh, kind of goes into Judith and uh, Judith's place there, of course, with Michonne and, and Rick's place. And uh, I didn't notice that the shirt that he's wearing is actually Rick's shirt. <laughs> so I was looking at the compass and I think I got thrown off by the compass and I didn't realize like, oh yeah, that's one of Rick's shirts. Negan stole Rick's shirt. And here it is right here. This isn't even long ago uh, from the first half of the Walking Dead season. It's not like this was a season ago or something, but I never noticed that it's the same, it's the same shirt. Negan just, uh, just uh, uh, grabbed one, <laughs> stole one of Rick's shirts so he could escape. That's kind of funny, kind of clever, kind of cool. Then we have this one here of the uh, the whispers, and this is one that was kind of explained through by uh, Greg Nicotero, and it is that uh, the whispers actually do have a, a a downside, and there's a reason why they didn't just all go after the group at the uh, the cemetery, why they kind of had to come up in little small hordes. And uh, he said that it's because if they start to act like humans, the other walkers around them will find out that they're not actually walkers and turn on them and attack them. So there is a downside to their sort of strategy to take walkers in with them. And it's that when they're doing it, they have to act like walkers too. So for example, when the walker uh, undoes the gate uh, at the beginning of this uh, episode, he has to do it very carefully because he doesn't want the other walkers around him, or, or I should say the walkers around him, to realize that it's a whisper. He's actually a person in there and, uh, and not actually a walker himself. So that explains somewhat why they sort of come in in the way they do and why they don't just all kind of <laughs> rush in all at once. Uh, even though against Michonne, that mayor recklessly rushing in might not be a good uh, strategy. Uh, this one was also kind of cool, and it is that uh, in the scenes where uh, uh, Jesus was being brought back on horseback and everything, uh, it was actually Tom Payne. So if you guys were wondering whether or not that was actually him there in the episode, yes, in fact, it was actually him playing that part. Uh, I to, well, you know, maybe a bit of a of a difficult uh, thing to do, but I mean, all he's got to do is lay there, right? <laughs> so uh, you know, maybe they put some white, uh, you know, white kind of makeup on him to make him look pale and he just 
basically gets to flop around. Easiest episode ever, right? <laughs> you just flop around and that's it. Uh, this one, I actually didn't catch this one almost at all. I guess the Negan and Tyra ones uh, don't get me, but uh, apparently with this one, they were trying to go for a Halloween uh, uh, Mike Myers type of, uh, of feel for Negan when he was escaping. If you look at the attire, certainly his, uh, his prison-esque uh, attire would remind you of that. Uh, be very similar to a Halloween Michael Myers type of... Um, of costume or or of of a shirt at least, and uh, I didn't catch that. I, I never got that parallel when I was watching the episode through. I didn't get that feeling. I when I watched it through, I didn't get the feeling like that Negan was going to really go kill anybody of importance anyway. Like I didn't get the feeling of impending doom that oh my god, Mike Myers is here is going to kill a bunch of people. I didn't get that sense from Negan when Negan broke out. I just I'm not sure why. Uh, maybe it's because I don't feel the same way about Negan as I do, you know, Mike Myers or something like that. I'm not sure. But uh, I guess that's what they were going for. And in that one, it didn't actually work for me. It didn't, uh, I didn't think of it the same way as maybe what they, what they wanted. It didn't seem to be kind of a scary, like, you know, ominous type of thing uh, to watch through for me at least. This one is, well, I think most of us would have got, this one's kind of uh, blatant, but they changed the words, right? Instead of uh, basically uh, Alpha Scene, where she uh, catches both uh, Luke and Alden, is pretty much verb almost exactly right out of the comics in terms of uh, the, uh, the, um, the scenes, like in terms of the when she pulls the double barrel shotgun on him it's like you know verbatim right out of the comics with her first uh, first appearance which is pretty cool then the comics she said don't move right uh in the television series uh she said trail ends here which i, I thought was a pretty cool for a switch it wasn't bad that's for sure i thought it sounded pretty good and, and it's a bit different because they kind of the, the whispers kind of lured them in in this case they created a fake trail uh that they thought yumiko was kind of creating for them and uh, you know luke and alden fell right into a trap they followed her right back to it uh, but it was cool. It was cool to see the, um, you know, that uh, that first uh, introduction, even though it had already been shown in trailers, pretty uh, obviously or blatantly. Uh, and then they did have one here as well too, where uh, they think that uh, Judith. Uh, and what she tells Negan that if she ever sees him again, she'll shoot him, uh, re is reminiscent of the uh, the scene between Daryl and Dwight, where Daryl tells uh, Dwight that basically exiles him and says, uh, you go and you keep going, Daryl tells Dwight, don't you ever come back here again. If I ever see your face around here again, I'll kill you. Uh, you go out there and you make it right. Uh, it looks like, uh, so then it says, it looks like Dwight listened to Daryl's advice because he winds up in Fear of the Walking Dead later this year, uh, which is cool. So so they think that the line between Judith and, and uh, Negan is reminiscent of what Daryl tells Dwight before he kind of exiles him. So I'm not sure, I'm not sure if that's exactly what they were going for, but uh, I see what they're saying here, that it's, it's somewhat similar in, in some ways. And this one's really cool because I didn't really notice this one at all. I thought it was a great shot when you look at Michonne and she cuts off the angle for the walkers or whispers that are underneath that little uh, little over part on the bridge there. And um, so she, she cuts off the angle. And uh, what they got here for this one is that this is reminiscent of how Michonne, in terms of the way it's shot, ha used to have her pet walkers that went around with her. So if you guys remember way back, like we're talking like season three, right? Uh, maybe did she do that part of season four? <laughs> you know, like, like this is way back Michonne. Uh, she doesn't really do this anymore, nor does she talk about it. Is it something that she, uh, I'm surprised she actually hasn't done anything like this again, right? But where she would bring around the walkers with her kind of to ward off others uh, or to uh, sort of sort of like a, a soft version of what the whispers do where it's just having some around you kind of can help sort of uh, keep the others uh, uh, you know sort of a little bit away from you that type of thing um, the whispers have taken that to another level right they've uh, they've evolved that concept even further but it's just kind of cool to think about because I thought it was a great shot to see the two like that with her in the background and again I don't know if it was intentional if that's what they meant to do but it's just uh, maybe it just turned out that way that's how it looked but that's pretty cool that uh, you think about that. And, and I often forget about Michonne's uh, pet walkers and, and that time uh, for her in the series. And they also have it listed here that it looked like Negan had escaped uh, from his cell uh, during nighttime. And then it quickly went to daytime. But actually he had escaped during uh, dawn. So it was basically just before sunrise when he was able to, uh, to get out. It's not like he really waited until broad daylight. It's just the way it kind of worked out that uh, when they filmed it and everything, it sounds like it was at dawn and it just kind of looked, I guess it, um, you know, it, uh, it came up pretty quickly. And then by the time he was outside after he had gone in, uh, it was, uh, it was uh, light outside. 
And that'll do it for some things you might have missed from The Walking Dead Season 9's mid-season premiere. If there's anything else that you guys noticed, uh, leave a comment below. Let me know what you think. And uh, if you missed it last night, we did the review. Uh, it's over 20 minutes in depth uh, where we go through the whole episode. And lots of great stuff in the episode. Lots of stuff to talk about. And send me your questions for the Q&As for this week, guys. We'll have lots of videos to come uh, throughout the week before episode 10 airs. Yeah, Walking Dead's back. Awesome stuff. Okay, I'll see you guys soon.